Hi, welcome back. Dynamics, lesson number four. Circular motion and projectiles. Let's see an example. A particle of mass m is projected with a horizontal velocity of root 7 gr over 2 from the inside and at the lowest point of a fixed smooth hollow cylinder of radius r as shown in the figure. There's a hollow cylinder of radius r and inside of that at the lowest point there is a particle of mass m with a horizontal velocity root 7 g r over 2. g is the gravitational constant. r is the radius of the hollow cylinder. And show that the particle will leave the inside of the hollow cylinder at a height 3 r by 2 above the lowest point. That means when you project this one, it will go up here and it will leave the cylinder at a height 3 r divided by 2 above the lowest point and we need to neglect the radius of this particle. Also show that the subsequent path of the particle meets the sphere at the point of the initial projection. So it will go up and come down to the same position where it has been projected. Let's see how are we going to solve this problem. So this is what is given and after some time the particle here will move upwards like this with an angle theta here with the tangential velocity v and reaction r. Now we can write the initial kinetic energy of this particle half m v squared v is the initial velocity is root 7 gr over 2. Simplification gives us 7 over 4 mgr. The initial potential energy will take it as the zero potential here so therefore obviously the potential energy is zero and the kinetic energy at the new position that means after it's moved upwards it has a velocity here equal to v therefore half mv squared is the kinetic energy at this point v is still unknown and now we need to find out the potential energy at the new position is the value mg times the height from the lowest position. So that is the amount of uh, amount of vertical distance that, that this has moved. So it be r minus r cos theta. r cos theta. So this is the height is uh, the difference between two heights. So mg times r times 1 minus cos theta. Now we can apply the energy equation where initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy should be equal to kinetic energy and potential energy at this new position. So kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial 0 and the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. In fact, it's the intermediate. At this point, kinetic energy is half mv squared and the potential energy is mgr1 minus cos theta. After simplification, we can find out the value of v squared, which is equal to gr times 3 by 2 plus 2 cos theta. To solve this problem, we need to find out the time at which this particle leaves the surface here. So therefore, we need to write an equation for the R reaction. So we are going to use the equation P equal to mf force equal to mass times acceleration for the normal motion. The motion, uh, if, you, if you move this one, there is a centrifugal acceleration towards this one. And there's a force R. My, basically the force inward is R but due to the mass there's another force acting opposite to R R cos theta this angle is theta because this angle is theta mg uh, R minus mg cos theta equal to mf m times the acceleration centrifugal acceleration is actually given by v squared over R is the acceleration towards the center of the cylinder 
Now we substitute that value of v here, which we found earlier, v squared. So we can obtain r minus mg cos theta equal to mg times 3 by 2 plus 2 cos theta. When you substitute for v squared, this r and this r will cancel off. And then we make r the subject, which is equal to mg times 3 by 2 plus 3 cos theta. Now we need to find out the time height at which the particle leaves the surface. At that point, the re reaction will become zero. When reaction equals zero, the particle will leave the cylinder. So we put r equal to zero, and 3 by 2 plus 3 cos theta will give us the cos theta equal to negative half, which is theta equal to 120 degrees. That means at when theta become 120 degrees, the particle will leave the cylinder. Therefore, the height at which the particle leaves the cylinder is equal to uh, basically, if you look at if you look at the picture back, this is the r, and then this total angle is 120 degrees. Therefore, this 90 degrees, this 30 degrees. So, r sine 30 is the height from here to the radius here r sine 30 plus r so that is the total height at which the particle will leave the cylinder r plus r sine 30 which is equal to 3 r by 2 sine 30 equal to half so therefore that is, this is the answer to the first part of the question okay let's move on to the second part in which we need to find out the projectile motion and v square is given as gr 3 by 2 plus 2 cos theta now cos theta is known which is negative half and therefore the velocity equal to half root of half gr and now we use the formula for the projectile in the horizontal direction which is equal to s equal to vt there is no acceleration therefore it is just the distance equal to velocities times t this should be the horizontal velocity. Therefore, t is equal to s divided by the horizontal velocity v cos 60 because the velocity towards this direction was v and v cos 60 will give us the horizontal velocity. So, which is equal to r uh, and then s actually distance from here horizontal distance to this point is equal to r cos 30. So we need to find out the time that this particle will take to travel a horizontal distance of r cos 30, basically up to this point. Vertically, if you drop a line here, this will be r cos 30. So r cos 30 divided by v cos 60. This v is the velocity when theta equal to 120 degrees. So that means the particle will go up here and it reaches here. At this point, the velocity is root half gr. So root half gr, but it is in the tangential direction. So therefore, the vertical direction, it should be v cos 60. So cos 60 is half. And then after simplification, cos 30 is root 3 by 2. After simplification, we get the time that it takes to reach this point horizontally uh, horizontal distance equal to this deflection this distance is root 6r over g now our intention is to find out how far it drops at this particular time so if you want to find out the distance it drops vertically you can apply the equation s equal to ut plus half gt squared in this case, same thing here, where u is the initial velocity. And in this case, initial velocity is the vertical horizontal, vertical velocity of the component here. So it has a velocity v here and vertical velocity v sine 60. This angle is 60 degrees here. But it is in the opposite direction because we are applying it to the downward direction. Therefore, g is positive, but velocity is negative half gt squared. Now we substitute the value of t 
as well as value of v in this equation so you get minus v sine 60 root 3 by 2 times t is 6 r over g plus half g t squared t squared will make the square root out so it will become 6 r over g so after further simplification we can find out the value of s which is the dis vertical distance that this particle will fall at the time that we found out earlier equal to s equal to 3 r over 2 and in other words what we see here is that the when you apl apply the time we can again prove that the vertical distance same vertical distance will be traveled at the time that it reaches to this point therefore that is the particle meets the sphere at the point of the initial projection because 3 r over 2 is the distance vertical distance from here to here and then we found out that is the time it took horizontal time it took to reach a point just above just above this point so that means that coordinate matches each other so the particle finally goes through, goes through this point